church family well it's the first of december no it's not it's only the first of november isn't it but do you know what you can see my christmas decorations behind me i've been fed up with all the doom and clue gloom and darkness and dreary stuff so today the 31st of october i and my family put our christmas decorations up because we're just fed up with it all and the notices this week were due to be completely different than this. But then at about 7pm tonight, Boris made an announcement putting us all into lockdown. So the notices have had to change. And I am completely thankful that we have the amazing Malcolm who has been able to quickly pull everything back together and change everything so that our notices are not completely out of date. So thank you and God bless you, Malcolm. But yes, you are on the 1st of November seeing my Christmas decorations. <laughs> I just wanted to be cheerful. I'll tell you what else is cheerful in November. There are a million birthdays in church. Now, Pastor Doris writes a birthday card to every adult who is a church member who we've got on the system who has a birthday in November. 
and Susie and Pauline write out birthday cards for big fish and little fish and the youth get cards as well and do you know what we've had some lovely messages back from people who've received birthday cards so I'm going to read out to you all the November birthdays I don't know what it was about February time but November seems to be very popular with birthdays so are we ready in November we have Jeanette, Stuart, Joy, Sarah, Jason, Stephen, Brenda, Pastor Praveen, Marion, Pauline, Rose, Tom Bearer, Pastor Williams, Ruth and Margaret. And then in the children we have Jamie and Zuriel, Marcus, Jason, Annie, Sasha, Jimmy, Abby, Jervis, Bonnie, Bethany, Oprah, Tino, David and Sherry. And that is an awful lot of birthdays for one month. But you might be listening and thinking, my birthday's in November. You haven't mentioned my name. Well, if I haven't mentioned your name, that means we don't have a birthday card for you. So if I haven't said your name, you really do need to get in touch with us. And then we can let you know that we're thinking about your birthday. But for something fun to do, please join me now. We're going to sing happy birthday to all those birthday boys and girls. Are we ready? After three, one, two, three. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. Hooray! And thank you for joining in with me so I'm not singing by myself. Fantastic. <laughs> right then, the real advent calendars. This week, I have placed an order for 720 advent calendars to go out to our three local schools. And thank you so much to everybody who has already committed and donated to this fund so that children 720 children in our community are going to get a chocolate advent calendar with a booklet to tell them all about the real meaning of christmas and especially at this lockdown time when we can't really go out and do all the good stuff that we would have to share the message and hope of jesus these advent calendars are going to be a real blessing but i had some amazing news last night do you know, I'm really glad we've had to change these messages because I've had some fantastic news. Last night, David, who is the CEO, like the boss of the real of the real chocolate company, he sent me a message to sort out the order. And he said to me, Do you know what? Because you've placed such a large order, I'm gonna throw in a couple of cases of calendars for free. I said, Thank you very much. That's really kind. I'm sure we can find some children who we can give the calendars to. And then a bit later on, I had another email and he said, Michelle, I'm going to make it up to a full pallet if you've got a food bank local to you that you can give the calendars to. So it, it turns out we're going to have about 850 calendars. So there's going to be over 100 extra calendars that we can give to the food bank. So even more people, even the children that we are not in contact with through our three local schools, even more are going to be able to have the real message of Jesus this Christmas. Isn't that amazing? And a great big thank you to David at the Real Chocolate Company for, for doing this. I think that is such an absolute blessing and is absolutely amazing. So, yeah, so that is wonderful. But please, if you would still like to donate, it's not too late. And thank you to everybody as well who was sent in their tides over this last week or so and taken them from under their pillows and posted them through church and sent them in for us. We really do appreciate it. And God is really, really blessing our ministry. And we thank you for being in support of that. OK, just a reminder again, it's our virtual cafe this week, quarter past 12 till quarter to one ish. <laughs> We have a lovely chat and a giggle and it's so nice to see everybody. And this week, I am particularly looking forward to Mandy telling us all about how her pumpkin pie went. It looked so delicious when she put on Facebook that she was making it and I can't wait to hear all about this. Okay. And Pastor Peter is back after his break. So this week from Monday, Pastor Peter is back. 
and we hope that and pray that he's had an amazing restful time with Lynn, don't we? And that everything is going to be amazing now that he's back. So we, I, I'm really looking forward to that, and I'm sure you are, and I'm sure you'll all see him next week. A couple of other things that I didn't put on the slide, but I, me and Susie have been sending letters out to the big fish this week, a little card and a Remembrance Day picture. So if you've had a poppy through the post, lovely poppy picture, please do, when your children have coloured it in, please do send us a photograph because it's Remembrance next weekend and we would love to include the children's artwork in our Remembrance service. That'll be fantastic, won't it? And the last notice as well for this week, please do remember Tracy, China, Shailen and Ty and the family in your prayers because on Thursday the 5th of November at 12 o'clock we do have the funeral service for Keith in church so please do keep them in your prayers this week. Well thank you for listening and bearing with me and thank you again to Malcolm for changing things at last minute. <laughs> Thanks Boris and next you're going to be blessed by hearing a prayer from Simeon. God bless you. Um, Lord, we thank you. We thank you for everything that you've done for us, Lord. We thank you for bringing everybody up to this day, Lord. We thank you for keeping us safe from the coronavirus, Lord. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for keeping this country safe, for keeping this world safe. We want to say thank you in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray that as um, the people tuning into this service, Lord, as they listen to it, help them to apply everything to their daily lives in Jesus' name. Lord, help them to take it in, Lord, and help them to apply it, Lord. Help them to even share it, Lord, to other people in Jesus' name, Lord. Lord, help this not just be something that will go in one ear and out the other, Lord. Lord, help them take it and help them dwell on it in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Many a dream has died Like a tree planted by the water We never will run dry So living water flowing through God, we thirst for more of you Fill our hearts and flood our souls With one desire just to know you and to make you known, we lift your name on high. Shine like the sun, make darkness run and hide. We know we were made for so much more than ordinary life. It's time for us to more than just. out to show them who you are so living water flowing through god we thirst for more of you fill our hearts and flood our souls with one desire just to
your name on high Shine like the sun Make darkness run and hide We know we were made for so much more than Welcome to Cornerstone Elam. On this first day of November, I'm, for them that don't know me, I'm John and I worship at Cornerstone Elam and just to say thank you for this opportunity. When I can share a message with you, I just thank the pastor and all the oversight for allowing me this privilege of being able to talk to you. Well, <clears throat> I go back about 20, 15 years ago, you know, there was a manufacture of tableware, or as we like to call them, pot banks. And this pot bank closed down. It was a medium sized company employing around about 100 people. And the site was completely stripped of all its manufacturing and production capabilities. All the personal equipment went leaving just a large empty shell. Very shortly, it got vandalised and social disorder followed on. So for safety reasons, the building was demolished, leaving a large open space, exposing the original concrete and brick flooring. Well, you can guess what happened next. Fly tipping. So very quickly it became a dumping ground. After many complaints concerning health and safety, the site was cleared up and to stop any reoccurrence, a very large, formidable steel fence was erected all the way around. It's still there to this day. Nothing has changed. No one has built upon this empty derelict site it's still the flat concrete base but now it is full of trees all displaying an abundance of various green leaves reaching about 12 foot high up into the sky it's transforming a derelict site into a lovely urban wood there are wild blackberries brambles growing and climbing all around the steel fence grass weeds an assortment of other wild plants now cover over the building rubble which was left behind even the cold concrete base itself has been transformed to a carpet of moss and weeds but it's the trees that dominate and give this impression of a dense wood all at the bottom of our road. A rural gem in an urban location. Well, I ask the question, who planted those trees? It wouldn't be the demolition team as they were clearing the site, would it? Or who would climb over a high steel fence just to plant trees? Well, of course not. No one planted them. They just grew. 
Genesis 1.11 in the scriptures tells us, And God said, Let the earth bring forth grass, the herb that yields seed, and the fruit tree that yield fruit according to its kind, whose seed is in itself on the earth. And it was so. And verse 12 closes with, And God saw that it was good. You see, nature just goes on obeying what God has told it to do. God has not yet said stop or slow down. He has not even said, well, just think about it. Or consider if it's a worthwhile proposition. No. Nature just obeys until it's instructed to do otherwise. And you know, this will continue until God gives nature a new instruction. You see, no one planted those trees. The seeds just fall to the ground, even onto concrete, where there ever there is a break or a crack in that concrete, the seed will grow down. It will germinate and it will grow. And as it grows, the roots push up the ground revealing more earth and so it just goes on nature goes on the leaves fall to the ground they rot down to make a mulch allowing more growth now you know we as humans are far superior to any seed with our intellect and our coordinative skills so, you know, God gave us ten commandments which are there for us to live by. They're there for us to follow, to organise our lives by. And the reason is that so we can enjoy a full and purposeful life. Following these rules brings, brings us to how God really wants us to live our lives. By obeying these rules... We're on the path of living a wholesome and fruitful life. But we've got to ask ourselves, really, do we follow God's rules? Now, let's be honest. If we're truthful, we question them. We debate. We analyse them. Then we rewrite them to suit our situation or our current environment. We even adapt them to suit our circumstances. And sometimes we adapt them to suit our conscience. You know, as human beings, we're very good at adding caveats to these God-given rules. If we were to condense the commandments into one verse, it would all be summed up in Luke 10, verse 27. Now, this is Jesus speaking. And he says, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbour as yourself. If we were all to act and live our lives like that, what an impact it would have. You know, there is no great theology here, and yet it leads to eternal life. It is so simple, yet so profound, that sometimes we can't grasp it, or even worse, we choose to ignore it. Just notice how many times in that scripture that I read, the word your is used. It's your. Hence it's personal, not, a co not, co -op, not cooperative, and it's definitely not de uh, denominational. It concerns you and God. Right at the beginning it says, your God. 
So we need to ask the question, is he my God? And I'll leave that question with you. I've, I've not quite finished yet, but just ponder on that. Is he my God? In all honesty, not just saying it as a cliche, but saying it from your heart. As we approach Christmas, not far away now, but we're getting closer. You know, this is how God shows his great love to us all by sending his son. This is love we do not deserve. It's unconditional love given to us all. Jesus was born to show us the way to the Father. Upon the cross, he took our faults, our wrongdoings, our sins, so we can have a relationship with our Heavenly Father. For us to have and enjoy this personal relationship with the Lord, we first of all have to ask him and to make a sincere commitment of ourselves to him and ask for his forgiveness. To have that sense of commitment that we have surrendered our heart, our soul, our strength and our mind. What that is saying, we have given ourselves wholly to the Lord. If we really could surrender ourselves in that way. Wow, just imagine it, just think of it for a moment. What an impact that would have upon your life, your family, your street, your church, your community, the country. What an impact it would have on our lives. Just like those trees growing on derelict ground, adding beauty and colour, we too do the same by allowing the seed of God to germinate in our lives and to slowly to grow and fully blossom that our lives can be like those trees showing colour, beauty and character. Come to that point where you give your life to the creator of all life. Let's pray. I asked the question earlier, is he your God? Well, that's just between you and the Lord. If you would like to know the Lord in a real and personal way, I'm just going to close with a little prayer. And if this is your prayer, then you pray it and really mean it. Lord, to this day I acknowledge that you are Lord of all, you are Lord of creation, you are Lord of my life. And I know, Lord, in the past I've sinned and wronged and done them things that are not pleasing to you, and I ask for your forgiveness. And now, Lord, I ask that you will just come into my life, into my situation, where I am at this point of time. And, Lord, I want to give my life to you, to follow and to serve you in my daily life. Lord, please be with me now. Come to me at where I am. Take my heart and my mind. And Lord, I want to serve and follow you. That one day, Lord, as you are with me now, that I will be with you in your home in heaven. I ask this in your name. Amen. If you have made that, sincerely made that prayer, if you would like to know more, on the website of Cornerstone Elam, you'll see our church number. And if you would like to just say and leave your name and your address, we can forward you some information concerning not the church, but concerning your relationship with our Heavenly Father. Thank you for listening to me this morning and God bless you wherever you are. Amen. 
We do thank you, John, for bringing us today's message. I'm sure many of us are blessed, encouraged and challenged by it. Thank you. And John, we thank you for the song Thrive by Casting Crowns that we had before your message. You know, John chose that especially for today and it's great to sing a new song to the Lord, isn't it? And I really enjoyed that one. So thank you, John. Now we're going to hear a testimony from Sarah Marie. And those of you who know Sarah will know what a tough time the family have had just lately. Sarah had a terrible pregnancy with a serious condition. Little baby Sarah Marie, a beautiful as she is, she's got some problems going on as well. And of course, Jimmy had a terrible accident where really he could have ended up losing his arm. Sarah's very bravely done a little video testimony for us to tell us about what's been going on. And I'm sure you will agree afterwards that, you know, she gives God all the praise and all the glory. We know that prayer changes things, don't we? We know we have a God who is awesome, who is mighty, who is a healer, who is everything we could possibly need. But we need to pray, don't we? And if you've got a problem, things going on, don't be embarrassed or shy or ashamed. Tell, tell one of us about it. We are church family. Together we can help one another. That's what we're here for, isn't it? We can help each other by talking and by praying together. And we know God answers prayers. He is mighty. He is awesome. He is wonderful. He is the way maker. He is everything we need when we come to him in prayer. So we're going to listen to Sarah's testimony and we're going to finish today's service singing, He is our peace and Lord, I need you. And we do need him right now, don't we? We need him every day. Shall we just pray together? Father God, we do thank you for everything that we have seen and heard in today's service. We thank you for the honesty from Sarah and her testimony. We thank you for John bringing us the message, Lord. Lord, help us this week to take all those things on board, Lord. Help us to be there for one another. Help us to listen and not to judge. Just help us, Lord, and help us when we are not feeling ourselves, when things are going wrong. Help us to be honest with our church family and friends and ask for prayer. Just be that strength that we need, be that encouragement that we need. Just do everything we need, Lord. Just be with us as we go about this first week of November. In your precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hello everyone. Hey, how are you? Hey, how are you? Um, I've been asked to give this short testimony. A number of weeks ago now, um, my husband Jimmy suffered an accident at work. A colleague um, created an injury to Jimmy's arm regarding an axe. And Jimmy was rushed to hospital. Now, he was in hospital for about, I'd say, four days, um, waiting for an operation. And he, he had the operation and he was um, discharged. When he came home, I, I just knew something wasn't right because he just wasn't well. And it just seemed like as if he should never have been discharged. He was discharged with uh, pain relief, so he was put on morphine and antibiotics and when he came home the same night he was deteriorating. So we called 111. Um, he was blue lighted basically, the paramedics came out and he was blue lighted back to the hospital um, and they they hit him hard with antibiotics, IV antibiotics, and he was um, being treated for borderline sepsis. So basically, um, the reason why I need to give this testimony is because Jimmy suffered a very, very dangerous injury. Um, he could have lost his arm totally, no doubt about that. He was in hospital alone due to COVID-19. I wasn't able to be with him. He was extremely, extremely unwell. And for me to not be there with him was just soul destroying. Um, as you can see, we've got a little baby. 
Um, my son Jimmy is only five as well and with two young children at home the thought of you know what he was going through alone as well as thinking the worst every day it was just heartbreaking and my son Jimmy as well he was very very upset my little girl was suffering at the time with um stomach issues um so there was a lot of crying involved and things like that now some of you may know some of you may not know um but for a number of years now i've been an anxiety sufferer and to go through something as serious as this basically you know the anxiety goes straight to the roof. Um, you, you can't explain the thoughts what are going through your mind, even though I think, even if you didn't suffer with anxiety, you'd, you'd, you'd really be thinking the worst. So obviously when Jimmy was discharged, we were so happy, but I just knew something wasn't right. And that night when the paramedics took him in, um, and he, he, he got rushed back to the hospital, when we heard those words sepsis, it was just agonising. All that night I didn't sleep. I cried and I prayed and I cried and I prayed. And uh, as well as thinking the worst, I was thinking, how has God brought me through this week? How has God brought Jimmy through this week? And looking back, I think, do you know what? God's good. God's amazing because God, all that week, gave me a peace that I've never experienced before. He helped me keep it together, which obviously I had to because of my children, because of my husband being in that hospital as well, suffering alone. Um, he gave me a peace, a spiritual peace that I've never experienced before. Um, anyway, Jimmy was discharged. Praise God, he was treated with um, extremely strong IV antibiotics and he was discharged and praise be to God, 11 days later, <laughs> it's like a miracle really, well it was a miracle, but 11 days later he was doing the coving in the house. <laughs> um, and that's only through the power of the Lord, 100%. And... I just want to give God all the praise, all the glory, because things could have been totally a lot worse, a hell of a lot worse. And without God, I, you know, I just dread to think, because that week I kept it together, and that week I was definitely, definitely 100% um, given a spiritual peace that I've never felt before, 100%.